Welcome back to the France 24 newsroom. You're watching Eye on Africa. I'm Haxi Myers-Belkin. Coming up on today's show, a planned mass suicide attack in the capital of Nigeria's northeast Borno state leaves only the assailants dead. We spoke to our correspondent in Nigeria early for the latest on that story. We'll be playing that for you in a second. Hundreds of migrants have broken through the border between Morocco and Ceuta, a Spanish territory in North Africa. Many were injured during the incident, but the migrants insist it was worth it to reach European soil. And the captain of Ghana's national football team is under fire in the United Arab Emirates for sporting an un-Islamic hairstyle. We travel to Ghana to talk to dedicated followers of that cut should Asamoah Gyan opt for the chop. Now let's start in Nigeria, where as many as seven female suicide bombers have blown themselves up in a failed attack in Maiduguri, the capital of Nigeria's northeast Borno state. Their driver was also killed as he tried to ram his car into a military checkpoint near the Muna refugee camp. Earlier reports suggested that a number of civilians were also killed in the blasts, but that was later refuted by authorities, who said that the would-be assailants arrived after a local 10pm curfew. Earlier we spoke to our correspondent Chika Odua in Kaduna. I asked her whether this would-be attack is likely to be the work of jihadist militant group Boko Haram. This is definitely the latest. In just the past few days, we've heard of at least four attacks starting Thursday night in northeastern Nigeria's Borno state. Around 11.30 p.m. in the evening, a female suicide bomber, she made her way into a convoy of people who were trying to go back to their villages that had been destroyed by Boko Haram. This is also coming just a few days, less than 24 hours after Boko Haram attacked a Nigerian army helicopter. Uh, so also we're hearing that there was another attack this morning as well, where Boko Haram members or suicide female bombers actually tried to target those displaced uh, living in an IDP camp, internally displaced camp, again, in Maiduguri in northeastern Nigeria. So this is just the latest from what we're hearing from this group. And do you think that this will help or hinder the government's claim that they've technically defeated Boko Haram? Well, it definitely hinders the claim. Um, we know that that is not the case because, um, for example, the U.S. President Donald Trump spoke with uh, the Nigerian president this week, saying that the United States will help, you know, Nigeria to fight against Boko Haram and help as far as supplying military equipment and helicopters, things like that. So the fight is still on. This is still ongoing. It's been uh, more than seven years now that Boko Haram has been claiming the lives of people in northeastern Nigeria, and it's not ending as of yet. Chika Odua, they're reporting from Nigeria. He rose to fame last year as a thorn in the side of Zimbabwean strongman Robert Mugabe, and now Pastor Evan Mawarire has said he's considering running in the country's general election in 2018, an election 92-year-old Mugabe has already said he'll be seeking to win. Mawarire is the founder of the This Flag campaign, that led to the largest anti-government protests in years in the country. He is currently on bail, facing charges of subverting the government and inciting public violence. Let's take a listen at what he had to say. If the need arises, or if it becomes necessary for me to participate in the elections, I really want to be available for that because, first of all, it is my right, and I believe it is my duty as a citizen to serve my nation in that way. I haven't made that decision yet, but I certainly don't want that door to be closed. It's one of the biggest clandestine entries into EU territory in Africa in 12 years. Some 500 migrants have stormed the fenced border between Morocco and Ceuta, one of two Spanish territories in northern Africa. Eleven police officers were hurt during the breach, as were scores of migrants. Others, seen on local television, were ecstatic at having reached European soil. Laurent Berchter has the story. <laughs> Scenes of joy in Ceuta as these migrants celebrate what they hope will be the end of their journey. Around 500 people made it to the Spanish city after storming a six-meter-high fence in the early hours of Friday. The barrier covered in razor-sharp barbed wire left many with bruises and bloodied hands. 
Clashes at the border also saw several migrants, as well as Moroccan and Spanish security forces brought to hospital. Yet for those who made it through, the injuries were a small price to pay to finally reach their goal. Mom, today I made it to Spain. Look at me, Mom. I'm in Spain. A Spanish enclave in North Africa, Ceuta is a known entry point for migrants trying to reach Europe. A large majority are usually intercepted by police and returned to Morocco. But those who make it through are taken to migrant centers where they can apply for asylum. The last attempt to enter Ceuta took place on New Year's Day when over a thousand migrants stormed the massive fence. All but two were caught and turned away at the border. This month marks six years since the beginning of the Libyan uprising, which would ultimately lead to the overthrow of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, the country's leader for more than four decades. But in Libya itself, there are few signs of celebration on this anniversary. Since 2011, living standards have plummeted and political instability has become the norm. France 24's Sharon Gaffney has this story. Queuing for cash at a bank in Tripoli, a daily ritual for many Libyans in a country that's been mired in insecurity and unrest since the uprising that led to the fall of Colonel Gaddafi six years ago. With daily power and water outages and food and basic supplies expensive and in short supply, people here are in no mood to celebrate the anniversary. Inflation, the cost of living, it's affected us. We have families and we can barely make a living. The cash crisis in Libya is a result of mistakes made by officials. If they had provided cash once a week, this problem would have been resolved by now. I haven't had any pay since late last year. It was tough financially, we were in debt, but now things are better. There's been political instability in Libya since Colonel Gaddafi was ousted from power in October 2011. He drooled the country for four decades and was toppled by an armed rebellion. <laughs> Libyans have faced years of conflict in the aftermath of the revolution and say living conditions have deteriorated even further since a UN-backed unity government was established last year. It too has struggled to impose order amid the threat posed by fighters from the so-called Islamic State militant group. Despite the lack of enthusiasm for the anniversary on the streets of Tripoli, authorities are hosting a series of cultural events in the capital to mark the uprising. To Mozambique now, where Cyclone Dineo has killed at least seven people and injured many more. Authorities are searching for survivors after strong winds and rain destroyed some 20,000 homes, affecting an estimated 650,000 people. Wildlife too has been badly hit. The storm wrought its greatest damage along Mozambique's southeast coast. South Africa, Zimbabwe and Botswana now find themselves in the path of the bad weather as the storm, now downgraded to a tropical depression, heads inland. In the 90s, we had the Rachel. In the noughties, it was the Justin Bieber. But for the last five years, Ghana's trendiest men have been sporting the Asamoa Gyan. The haircut, where the hair is shaved at the sides and left long on top, has become a firm favourite in Ghana, in no small part thanks to the popularity of Gyan, captain of the country's national football team. But the iconic look is under threat. Katerina Vitozzi reports. <laughs> Joshua Ayike and Jonathan Amagavi run one of the hippest barbers in Ghana's capital. Their clients are young, stylish, and their favorite haircut is the Asamoah Jan. Asamoah Jan haircut is like this. Um, you cut the side, you fade the side, you fade the other side, then you leave it. The back should be long and then the top too. From, it's just from front to back, so that like, you get a mohawk shape. Jan is the captain of Ghana's national football team. He's worn his hair like this for years. But this season, he's playing club football in the United Arab Emirates, and officials there want the mohawk to go. They say the different lengths of Jan's hair is counter to Islamic teachings. But stylists here believe a slick hairstyle is an important part of Ghanaian identity. 
our fathers and our granddads always like to look trendy. Uh, they like to cut their hair, keep their beard like really clean and stuff. So I think it's, it's, it's more of like a cultural thing. The Jian look can be spotted across the craft. Fans are split on whether their style icon should go for the chop. You need to cut your hair the way it's going to fit you, the way you like you want to cut your hair. So I think you shouldn't cut it off. If you don't, maybe the team will sack him. So the best thing to do, you should do it. I, mean, I don't see anything wrong with his hair, so I think you should keep it. But Jan's set for a trim. A spokesperson's confirmed the Mohawk will go in time for Jan's next game. And that's all we have time for right now. There's more news coming right up. Do stay tuned. نقاش فرانس 24 جدل الان وحديث وتعليق من وفي كل مكان. France 24, c'est une passerelle entre les cultures, c'est la diversité. It's also a great way of sharing it and discussing it on social media. We give a voice to women and girls, whoever they are, wherever they are. هل تعرفون باريس؟ أحقا تعرفونها؟ تابعوا France 24 لمعرفة الناس. Tout ce que vous avez toujours voulu savoir sur l'Europe, c'est sur notre chaîne.